Hey nerds, welcome to Jerry Bear Reacts. Today we are going to rank the 100 characters in a tier list from trash to C, B, A, S, and there's a special category entitled Mr. Goat. And if you're new here, if you've never witnessed this before, Mr. Goat simply stands for Mount Rushmore greatest of all time. So what we do is we're gonna rank these 50 plus characters. Here they are, here's their mug shots. We're gonna put these peeps in these following categories, trash, C, B, A, S. Once we're finished, we will take four people from the S tier and they will go up in to the Mr. Goat category. Only four people can be here because it is the Mount Rushmore. These will be our four, our, our four goats. Heavy emphasis on this, because I feel like this may be a more divisive list compared to the Vampire Diaries, the originals, and Teen Wolf. I love everybody that's in chat. We're going to talk about this stuff. I'm going to read what you guys are saying. But at the end of the day, this is my list. <laughs> All right? This is my list. Please do not be upset with my list. You can be, We can argue about it. It's fine. I will then put this right here. I'm going to put this into... I'll do it right now, actually. I'm going to put this into Discord, okay? Anybody that's a part of this Discord can do this same exact list. Post your results. Let me know who you think. Let me know who your goat is. Everything in between, all right? First up, Anya, right? That's her name. I can't, I can never remember. So I like Anya's character a lot. The way that she was introduced, she was kind of the leader there a little bit. And they have that moment where her and Clark fight it out. I know she was weak. I still call a little BS on Clark getting a little bit of advantage, but it is what it is. It's television. And they have the moment where they're they're going to go their separate ways and potentially try to work out a truce between the grounders after Clark gets her respect and she gets shot. Imagine if they would have shot Clark right there. Imagine. I liked Anya. She wasn't on screen a little bit. I'm going to be very super duper generous with the ranking and I'm going to give her a B. I was going to give her an A for Anya, but I don't think she deserves that high. But I think there was a lot, a lot of potential for her to kick things off. A lot of people ship Anya and Clark. I could, I could see that. Anya and Raven, I don't really see at all. But, I mean, people can write whatever they want. I feel like that's super generous. I was going to put her in C, but... Hey, listen, off top, Allie? You think I'm going to give an A for Allie? Absolutely not. Allie's getting an S tier. Do you know why? Because this lady played this fucking role perfectly absolutely perfectly she had that stone cold look very maniacal very stern and a hundred percent just felt like an ai whether i was annoyed when she was on screen because of what was going on not by her acting or whatever it was i mean ali's the real siri <laughs> she crushed that shit now on the other hand becca Becca did make the flame. She had all that stuff. She wasn't on screen that much, okay? She didn't get enough stuff. She was back in season seven a little bit. She was just there. We saw a couple scenes. I don't have enough to actually rank her. I'm not going to put her in trash, so I'm going to put her in C tier. But I do, for antagonist, I do think one of the better villains. And that accompanied with Jaha to lure people in to take that chip. There was a lot of things where it's like, okay, who's next? How are they going to get these people? I wish season three was 20 plus episodes. Slowly but surely watching people convert. I love it. Oh, 100% different, different beings. I agree. Okay, listen. Uh, Bellamy and Octavia's mother. I mean, what did she do? And she gave birth. Okay, like she didn't do nothing. She sweated on screen. That was it. I got nothing else for. Her. I have no attachment. And listen, guys, I'm, I may feel like she was a bad mom anyways. <laughs> ah. If they ran to Sanctum to get away from Allie, but she hacked her way into the ship. Damn. A sass. That would have... A sass. Imagine that. I mean, they did shut down Allie's AI, but imagine if the AI wasn't gone and Allie hacked in the primes. That would have been some shit. That would have been fucking wild. Her name was Aurora. I feel like that's right. Everybody keeps saying it. I'm just there. Aurora traumatized them and got floated. Yeah, she literally traumatized them and then left. She went to go get cigarettes in space. Anyways. Hey, listen. You guys can call me mean for this one, but Gina, Gina. 
trash. That's our, That's my first trash character. It's a shoehorned relationship with Bellamy. And then they, they use her death to kind of help Bellamy sway himself with Pike. There wasn't enough screen time at all to justify any of it. She was just kind of there. She gets stabbed. I don't care. Y'all said her name too. What did she do? Nothing. Trash. She was on TV for a little bit. She hung out. I'm not vibing with her. Dr. Singh? A whole backstabbing, mother-loving sack of fuck. Trash. Sorry. What did she do? Nothing. Experimented. Cut into people. Went into the bone marrow. Against, against orders. Callie got floated off screen. Good. Charlotte! Wow! King of trash. King of trash right there. Little mama Charlotte. What the fuck did Charlotte do? You know what she did? Sorry. Fly, yeah. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Fucked over other characters, then ran away. Fuck Charlotte. Ho ass, little racist ass, little bitch. Fucking stabbing whales in the neck for an eye. Who makes me mad? Stab whales in the neck for no good reason and just watch the shit happen with Murphy. They're stringing Murphy up and it took her fucking forever to be like, it was me. I have demons at night when I sleep. And Bellamy's and Clark said I should extinguish them. And I watched Clark kill somebody and now I'm a murderer. I gotta jump off a cliff. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Let me tell y'all something. If at any point during this show, if Charlotte would have showed back up, I would have stopped the fucking recording right then and there. I've never wanted a, a child to die. But that little fucker, 100%. <laughs> Listen, I know George Bush said no child left behind, but sometimes you got to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Charlotte eating herself off the cliff was super... It was super funny to me, too, because she took off like a fucking flying squirrel. Like, she jumped like she had a wingsuit on. <laughs> Imagine if she survived like Octavia. It was the same distance. I guess her bones weren't fully developed yet. Anyways, regardless. Next up, a little controversial. But it's not going to be as bad for you all as you think. Dioza. I don't like Dioza at all. I There's nothing about Dioza that I like. Two things. She had a couple badass quips that I enjoyed. And her military expertise came into play a couple times. The only reason I'm not putting her in trash is because I did like some of her whimsical, her, her, her wit. I did enjoy some of it. I enjoyed the scenes with her and Octavia on uh, Sky Ring, right? I enjoyed that. Other than that, I really don't care. C. That's where she goes. I can see it be C for you, you think? I get it. I can respect the A tier 2 young star, by the way, if that's where you want to put her. Yeah, I couldn't care. I literally, listen, there's going to be characters that you all love that I don't care about, and there's going to be characters that I love that you don't care about. So they're just putting that out there. I play the devil's advocate. There's no D trash, F trash, just B trash, you know? This fucking Diana Ross trash, I'm not even gonna talk about her. Actually, I am. How fucking stupid. This lady gonna start the during the Unity Day celebration. Bombs. Kills Kane's mother. That's the first moment. I remember, I didn't like Kane. I didn't like him at first. But I watched this man mourn for his mother saying the same thing that she was saying to people and with that little tree and that shit that my empathy kicked in it hurt watching watching a man hold his mother as she died really upset me take away the characters just in any scene with that i think would make me emotional and then this fucking cunt ass old lady steals their fucking ship and she dies on impact which I love, by the way. I'm glad that she died. But I didn't get nothing else. I would have loved for Kane to have killed her. I would have wished she would have survived for a split second or something. But it played out the way it played out. It is what it is. Trash. Ooh, Red Clark already? Ooh.
<laughs> All right, so Clark, so <laughs> save Clark for the end. Bet, bet. All right, no, I will. I'll save Clark for the end. She'll sit right there. Echo slash Ash. Ooh, there's a lot of people that don't fuck with Echo slash Ash. There's a lot of people. You know, there there came a, a point in time. Here, here's how I'm gonna roll this through. Okay. They set up her and Bellamy's relationship the first time they were with each other in the cage. Set it up immediately. Then you kind of had some things play out. She runs to the queen, which I didn't like. And I was like, man, I was kind of pulling for this person. And then she's with Asgata. She has the stuff, right? She kind of is like an asshole. But then her time up in space with Bellamy and that relationship, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it a little bit. Now... I was really pulling for Echo's redemption, for her just being becoming a good person after getting exiled, her wanting to do good. I had empathy a little bit, but I understood why Octavia did what she did. She survives. I really, really hate the Orlando situation. I don't like that. I get the strategy behind it. I really do. I understand, but it felt super shitty to me. It felt super shitty and over the top. So at one point, Echo was kind of floating up here for me. I had moments where she was down here. I did like the Bellamy relationship, but uh, I'm gonna have to go the middle ground here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do A. I'm gonna put her in A. That's where I, that's where I A for Ash. That's where I'm gonna put her. So that's what I think. That's what I think, peeps. I'm gonna read what y'all said while I was thinking about all this stuff. Yeah, I'll keep Clark to the end. Uh, Amori, S tier. What's up, Potato? Amori's S tier. Simple as that. Amori was, at, you know, at first, obviously the betrayal of Jonathan, but her survival thing comes back around. That's all, that's well in the past. Uh, I do still stand by the fact I thought the freak drainer thing was going to be a way bigger issue moving forward. I'm kind of glad that it wasn't, but um, I just feel like that would have been an issue at some point or even get to a new planet, them not understanding what that was. It just, I thought it was going to be a bigger issue. It wasn't. It's okay. But Amori's relationship with Jonathan, Amori's survival instincts, everything about her, I adore and I love. Harper, I can't. 100% put Harper in an S tier, but I can put her in an A tier. I'll put Harper in A. Um, I know she was in a bad place, but I the whole the whole little scene with Monty for a little bit was very upsetting. But she she came around to it, right? So Harper, I give her an A tier. Monty's mom is a hot piece of fucking garbage. While that's the most emotional scene for me of the entire show was watching Monty kill his mother to save Octavia. It really was. That's the most emotional scene for me. And it has nothing to do with his mom or his mom being a good character, bad character, whatever. It's Monty having to pull the trigger on his mother to save his friend. And it just, it hurts. Harper is a precious bean, by the way. I have nothing negative to say about Harper. I just don't think she was S tier for me. I do, Harper, Harper, remember she wanted Jasper and Monty was like, you're a fucking idiot for that girl wants you, blah, blah, blah. Super wholesome. Maya? I'm going to give Maya an A tier too. I liked Maya. I was very iffy about her at Mount Weather because I really thought at one point or another she was going to betray them. I really thought that she was going to betray them at some point or another. Genuinely did, but she never did. And she was with Jasper and her and Jasper's relationship. I really loved it and she was super precious and they were super nervous with each other and they were super nerdy and they literally their first little kiss around the paintings come on dude that's like your typical high middle school even high school first relationship first crush first kiss like they were super cute together and i maya's precious wholesome little bean and clark held that fucking piece of glass in her throat and she's like hey man i'm just listening to Mbop by the handsome brothers and i just i'm just trying to clean <laughs> She did, she did deserve better. 100% all around. Ooh, next up is Indra. I don't even have to think, take a fucking second to put Indra up in S tier. I liked Indra from the jump. You know why? Because Indra did not give a fuck. Indra has hands, 
rated E for everyone. It's whatever for whoever, any time of the day. Indra was ready to throw blows. It didn't matter what you said to somebody. It didn't matter what was going on. Indra cutting off uh, Anya. Indra cutting off Lexa and saying, no, no, no. Indra was not scared in those earlier seasons to say what needed to be said. Indra, an absolute legend. If you guys didn't watch the season seven recap, my favorite character for season seven was Indra. I didn't think Indra would last as long as she did throughout the show. And she made it, I mean, she, all the way. All the way. Indra, if somebody deserved their ascension to this, this peaceful stuff, it was Indra. Agreed. I, I love Indra to pieces. I love everything about Indra. I just, superstar, right? Her taking Octavia under her wing, her forgiving Lincoln, her, she had multiple, multiple powerful scenes. She was injured a lot. I still think she should have whipped Shade Hate's ass a little bit easier, but I get it for storytelling purposes. Indra and Kane's friendship is a top tier friendship, the way that that developed all of it. Remember how Maya's, Maya's character could have evolved if she didn't die? True. True. I, I think she would have, um, I think Jasper would still be with us 100%. I think, you know what I think? Honestly, personal per, like thing right now. Say Maya lives, somehow she lives in Jasper. I say the season five finale, Monty and Harper and Maya and Jasper have kids and they stay with the ship as they travel. 100% that's what would have happened if Maya lived. Lock it in. Season five finale would have had Monty and Jasper with their with their wives and their kids and they would have had somebody else alongside Jordan I would like to think that that's what would have happened yeah wholesome Gaia I'm gonna keep it moving before I get sentimental I like Gaia's character I never I don't think Gaia's character got where it should have been but I enjoyed her on screen every time I saw her and I think the more stuff I see uh, her in, I love this actress. I think everything she's in, she crushes it. So I'm going to give her an A. I thought about B tier, but I enjoy Gaia too much that I'm going to give her an A. The only thing about Gaia is her actress was off doing another show. That makes sense. That makes sense. B for Gaia. I thought about B, but I, I think I really just enjoy her on screen. Uh, Man, you guys said her name earlier. That was with Octavia. Fuck, fuck this person. I don't like her. I don't like anything about her. I'm going to keep it moving. Give Nyla a B. Cooper? Yeah, Cooper. Fuck Cooper. I'm going to give, give Nyla a B. Uh, Aiden? He's just a little dude. He's not trash. I'm going to give him C tier. Oh, look. Dioza next to a kid. Um, Damn, he just died, didn't he? So, Aiden. I like Aiden. But he had his head chopped off. He's not trash, though. So, I'm going to put him in C tier. Uh, Brian, you know, what? <sighs> Brian just disappears. Okay. He goes off. I liked him and Miller together. He was a wholesome boy. I, I want to put him in B just because B for Brian. I just don't think he deserves it. I don't think he deserves it. I'm gonna give him a C rapid fire here. You guys ready? I'm not, I'm not gonna spend too much time with this cage dog shit emerson dog shit that's as easy as it is dog shit dog shit characters this dude dog shit the one that told bellamy to shoot jaha all right rapid fire now dante i didn't hate dante i feel like dante really genuinely had some best interest in mind while wanting to get to the surface he wasn't as willing to be as radical as his son but he was eventually persuaded so while i won't put dante in trash i'm gonna give him c i'm gonna put him right there in c tier i'm gonna save some of the main characters for last finn Wait, what are we doing right here next to charlotte i'm not i'm not wasting time with finn i'm not even gonna talk about it actually you know what 
this dude, Illidan, Illinari, Illilin, whatever the fuck. Trash. <laughs> I just, you had some crops. You burned down the fucking thing. I know you didn't know, but nobody even tried to stop you. You were just there. You go to the conclave. There was something with you and Octavia. <laughs> Who cares? I don't. I don't think he's a bad dude, by the way. I understand his actions. I get it. He was chipped. He had a murderous family. Dude had trauma. I get it. But, like, you don't deserve anything from me. Some characters made B tier for me simply because they were interesting enough. I feel that. So why put him in trash? What did he do? What did he do? I didn't enjoy any scene with him. Except his death scene. <laughs> Props to him for Octavia. <laughs> yeah, give him... Give him C tier because he pulled Octavia. <laughs> kind of forgot about that and wish uh, I put him in trash. It'd be like that. Taka Watiti. All right, bro. A. Sinclair. Part of me wants to go A, but I'm going to give Buddy a B. I liked him. I liked him and Raven's relationship. Um, I thought they worked off each other well as like, I don't want to say father and daughter, but definitely mentor and student, which is what they were. And his death felt rushed, but you kind of knew it was coming. And he knew the Latin to activate the chip. And he was just a wholesome dude. He didn't do anything, man. He deserved better. He deserved better. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit here, okay? Wick. I know this actor is controversial outside of the show. But I'm going to stick just with Wick, okay? Just the character of Wick. And I'm going to give Wick a C because he was funny. And he said something, they were like, we don't want to have a big fire so they know where they're at. And he said, we fell from a football stadium from the sky. We know, they know where we're at. Wick was funny. Him and Raven's thing could have worked long term, I feel like, with them both being mechanics. They had a cool dynamic. But like, he didn't do anything. He was, he was few and far between. I heard that he was a little, was either racist or homophobic as an actor. Don't quote me on that. I just read what you guys put in fucking YouTube comments. I don't know, but I heard he got fired from the show. I could be wrong. Yeah, he said racist stuff on Twitter. Okay. I think Shaw also deserved better. I enjoyed Shaw. I'm going to give Shaw a B, you know? I'm going to give Shaw a B outright. Fuck it. You know who else should have been fired from the show? Jason Ronan. <laughs> oh, that would have been some shit, right? Anyways, Shaw B tier. I enjoyed, buddy. I enjoyed him. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna give NyQuil a B. How about that for a curveball? You know why? This was a big, wholesome brute of a man. He was a goddamn medic. He took care of people. He had people's best interest in mind, and he was a wholesome boy. NyQuil, Nyco. NyQuil was very wholesome, and I love dude. He's an A for you. You loved him. I feel it. I respect it. I respect it. I like NyQuil a lot. Uh, Titus, also, why are you on the list? Let's clear this out a little bit real quick. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? Nitty gritty. Zorin, no offense, little buddy. You didn't do nothing. I'm sorry. That's the little kid for, that's that's in... Uh, he also acts in uh, uh, Stranger Things. First episode, August 15th, peeps. Who else do I want to put in trash? Trash. The Queen, Trash. All kinds of late. It's okay, Angel. No worries. Welcome in, though, my friend. And then Ontario, Canada. Trash. We were just talking about this. Hey, I just want to give... I don't I don't want to... Okay, without actually saying the word. She took advantage of, of Jonathan. We were talking about this just a second ago. And for that reason, trash. So we get down to this list down here, all right? We're going to throw these people in. I'm going to save some of the main characters here for last, okay? First thing we're going to do, I'm going to turn some heads. I'm going to give Josephine a C. And the reason I'm giving Josephine a C is because I enjoyed her fucking character. I would give her higher if they had another picture of Clark on here playing Josephine because uh, her playing Josephine was even better than the Josephine character itself. I loved it. I thought it was great. So, with that in mind, she gets a C. She's not going to be trash for me. These will be rapid fire, and the last few will have uh, big talking points. 
Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? You're a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you have somebody else living inside your body. Yes, you do. Delilah. Trash. I, you know what? I'm just going to put it in there because I like Delilah and Jordan. I don't know if this is supposed to be Delilah or the Prime, so I'm just not going to take any chances. I'm throwing her in trash. <laughs> I was just, I thought about putting her in C tier, but I'm just going to go ahead and move her to trash. It is, them's the breaks, you know what I'm saying? Clark Josie was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, for what she did to Monty, fuck her. Or Murphy, excuse me, fuck her. That's just not acceptable. And I still, I, I'm going to talk about that for one second. Murphy saying, and it's very in character for Murphy. He said, the things I do for love, right? Or the things I do to survive, whatever it was. That line should not have been in the show. They should have took that line out simply because of what was happening to him. It undermined it, and it made it seem like Murphy was cool with it. But he still even tried to say beforehand, like, he was already with... He's like, I have somebody else. That shit made me mad. Anyways, Ty Games. What's up, my friend? Welcome in. Hope you're doing good. Drink a little bit of schwater. They could have done better, but still done dirty. All right, peeps, Let, let's get down to the nitty gritty here with a couple of these folks. I'm going to start knocking people off that weren't around for too long. Uh, Luna. You know what? I'm going to grab. They, they brushed over it very badly. I agree. Luna. Okay. I like Luna a lot. Now. This doesn't mean she's going to be in B. I'm just going to hold her here for a second. Okay. So Luna. They go to her for help. She rejects them. I get it. She has her oil rig. She's living out there. She's doing her best life. And she really tried to work with them and gave up all of her blood for that solution. And she had a moment where she snaps. And then she shows up to the fucking conclave. She's like, if I win, nobody gets the bunker, bitch. We're all dying. Luna is a stone cold badass. And I love the way that they presented her. And I love the way that she fought. She fucking killed somebody. And in the same move, took off their dog tag. Took off their t in the same spit. That shit was code, bro. Whoa. A little bit of prime. Why did I do it twice? Prime sub there from Cat. I appreciate you summoning with your Twitch. Summon? Summon? Summoning? Thanks for subbing with your Twitch Prime. Enjoy your emotes, my friend. If you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime. I'm not doing that. Anyways, guys. Uh, Luna. I don't think she's deserving of S tier. I think if she would have stayed around for a little longer, 100%. Thank you for the follow, Sky. Much love to you. Drink some water. I'm going to give her an A tier. I love Luna. Yeah, she reached her breaking point. I like her a lot. I really do. Wells is going to get a little bit higher of a ranking than he probably should. Um, And it's based off of solely potential. And I'm going to put Wells in B because the kid truly meant well. And he was super, he was sweet. And I just, the character never got to where I think it could have gone. And Clark just forgave him. Just forgave him. And he just forgave himself. And then the next fucking scene. The next scene. I think if Wells would have stayed around even to the end, he could have been an S tier character in my opinion. For sure. Wells also deserved better. Yeah, imagine what it would have been like if Wells would have stayed around. Mm. Clark would have been a better she would have had a more moral ground herself yeah 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 he stood his ground against Murphy he didn't take no shit so you know the end on the books hell yeah now I don't know if y'all remember I was so dumb they said something he was like limping and somebody said he only had one leg and I thought buddy legit had one leg and I thought that until he died for a second and I was like oh wait he got two legs that dialogue threw me off I was like hey man you beating up a one legged man that's kind of fucked I do like how Wells beat the shit out of Murphy like four times in the first like three episodes he was in. <laughs> Murphy got beat up the whole first season. My man got his ass whipped. And he kept trying to fight people. My man would get beat up and then would want to fight somebody that just beat him up. Like, bro, take the fucking hint. You ain't winning that one. All right, guys, let's do. Let's go ahead and do Jake, Jake Griffin. Now, Jake wasn't on screen. Jake gets a C. He gets a C. He got floated. 
but he was the one that found the solution about what was going on in the thing. So, you know, it is what it is. He deserved in that first. Oh, he 100% deserved in that first season. Yeah, I agree. Murphy deserved that ass beating. Jake Griffin also deserved better. He had the solution and they, they went a, a different route. I just realized how fucking big my chat box is. Russell Prime, Shade Hater, JR Born. I don't give a shit what you all say. He's going S tier because every scene he was in was amazing. I don't like Shade Hater, by the way. I thought that should have ended in season six, but JR Born brought this shit. The way that man ate that fucking cookie, hilarious. This dude came in here, played this role to a perfection, and dominated everything he did. He was a great Russell Prime. He was a great Shade Hater. The scenes of him playing chess, JR Born, baby. JR Born gets S tier. I will say this though, if I didn't like Russell Prime, if I didn't like Shade Hater, he wouldn't be there. But JR Born, yeah, oh yeah, JR Born, but with Ali's code, it would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was great. But now, here's what we're gonna do though, okay? Here's what we're gonna do. Here's the flip side of it. So here's how a great actor can elevate a mediocre character. But what about a perfect actor with a horrible character? Now, I need to put, there's no, there's no in-between place for this, okay? Maybe I make one. I have to tell you all something. We're going to talk about Pike. Let's take a second to talk about Pike. Charles Butchy Boy Pike is a horrible character, okay? He is trash. He is. His viewpoints are garbage. He's hateful. He's racist to the grounders. He's 100% waving his flag. Now I'm going to say something. That Mike, there it is, Mike Beach is one of the most incredible actors. This dude, there's moments where he speaks and I'm just like, fuck, dude, like I'm in there. I'm in there. Pike, man, Mike Beach acted his ass off. He really made me believe. He made me hate the character. But at the same time, I love the actor. Oh, so it's hard. So in a situation like putting J.R. Bourne in S tier because of how good the actor is, Russell Prime wasn't that morally corrupted. Shade Hayda was. And I didn't like the scenes with Pike. So like Pike would come on, I would like Charles's acting ability. I would love it. But like he would come up and everything was so negative, right? They weren't like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it with words right now at the moment. I do have to say, I don't know. Part of me says S tier for Mike Beach. And the other part of me knows trash tier for the character. So it's like, I don't want to put him in any of the other tiers. It, it has to be one or the other, right? You see, yeah, you guys are get it. I can't, I genuinely, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We can all argue about it. I don't give a shit. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. Simply put, here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go, I can't put him in A. I can't put him in S because of the, the morally corrupt character. Can't put him in trash for how good the acting was. I'm going to go B for Mike Beach. Okay. I'm going B for Mike Beach. That's my middle ground. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're going to do just because of his name. That's it. Take it or leave it. Creepy, you can ban me all you want. And I, I'm not saying that he's not trash. Okay. We get that. He killed those innocent people. He fucking hates grounders for no, based off of nothing, right? But my, he, I, put any amazing actor in that spot. I can't do it. I gotta, gotta accept it. Yeah, yeah. Be safe. All right, we're all there. Cool. I had to get that out of the way. That was my big one. I'm good with that. Thank you, my friend. Welcome in, by the way. B for beach. See, sometimes you got it. You got to spice it up. Now, what about the rest of these peeps? Let's go ahead and get Abby out of the way. Woo, 
Abby's controversial as fuck, huh? They killed his family? Yeah, but like, you know, I get I get that. I get that. I'd be mad too, but I wouldn't be a fucking racist about it. <laughs> he was like, I don't like the way they look. <laughs> He's like, they smell. Let's do Abby. Abby had some bars though when she spoke. And I didn't hate Abby until Blood Raina. C tier trash. Ooh, I knew I'd get a trash. I knew I'd get some trashes. Abby ended A because of how ingrate she was to Clark and Raven. I like that. I like that answer. She never took accountability, though. I agree with that. A lot of C's. A lot of C's. Bunch of C's. Couldn't stand her in season five. I respect it. Solid B for you. I liked her, but the first season, um, she lost me in the later ones. I respect that. I respect that a lot. Okay. So for me, right, moms are human and can be trash, but still love her kids. I agree. Yeah. Her love for Clark is never going to be wavered by how shitty of a character she is. She loved her daughter. That's no different. I'm not going to do A for Abby. This isn't, yeah, we're not doing alphabetical. You ain't got to worry about that. I think Abby started off, I really love her, her level-headedness. Let's just say season one, okay? Season one, I would have had her probably S or A. I really liked Abby in those, that first season. But then she immediately had her drop off, right? She had her drop off. And then the stuff with, with Blood Raina not wanting. I don't. She loved Marcus. But I think at the end of the day, Marcus loved her more. I don't ever think that was a two way street. You know, I don't ever think I don't think it was a two way street between them two. And I kind of want to go B, but I do think I agree with the general consensus on this one. I, I do think I agree about the C thing. I think I agree with you guys. Like I, I liked Abby. I love the actor. Don't get me wrong. Not as much as I love Pike, but I mean, come on. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, she goes back, okay? But April, little April O'Neil, but still, I'm going to go C. I'll put her in C. I'll put her right next to her floated ass husband. I'll put her there. I understand why some people don't like Jasper. I get it, but I I understand his state of mind. I understand where his head was at. I get that he went from being the comedic character, kind of lighthearted, nerdy kid, pothead really, and then into depressed, and then kind of like what's the word? I don't know. I don't know what the word is for it. It's one of them. I don't want to say the wrong one. It sounds stupid. But he just didn't care. He lost his sense of caring. He didn't give a shit anymore. And I think if Jasper would have stayed for a long time, I would have put him in S, but I'm going to I'm gonna put Jasper in A because I loved all of his scenes. And I, I felt for Buddy, and especially with the whole Maya situation. And I'm actually going to move him over so he can be right there with Maya. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I, want, I want him and Maya to be together. So, I love Jasper. That's where I'm putting him. I don't think he was terrible. I just think brother had some trauma in him. I think he, uh, I think he got to a place he couldn't kip, kip up out of. Like I said about a lot of characters too. A lot of people have, there's a lot of unresolved trauma with these kids, by the way. There's a lot of unresolved trauma. It's not just Jasper. You can make that argument for any of our main hundred, but he did play that shit well. He did play it well. From being able to flip that switch, I like it. Sass, if I don't give you the VIP, Re remind me after this is over so I can pull it up and do it, okay? So when this is over, if I don't mention it, just remind me. Or Crippy can, either or. Alright, that's where I'm putting Jasper. I'm not going to spend too much time talking. He's a wholesome boy. I enjoyed him. I still think he should have died at the end of the first, was it, first episode? He took a fucking thing through the chest. We're going to have some disagreements on this. I just want you guys to know something. Before I do it, <laughs> we're going to have some disagreements on this next one. Because you're going to be like, why? Again, I've recently learned that the actor had some issues outside of the show. This isn't about their personal life and their viewpoints on things. I'm going to stick with the acting abilities. Great for the character, but I'm going to stick with the character and somebody that I loved. Okay. Let's take a second to talk about Thelonious Jaha. All right. We're going to talk about Thelonious Jaha. I stand by the fact 
that he had the most perfect death in show history almost at the end of season one. Almost had a perfect conclusion to his character. Sitting up there in the ring with his drink. With just sitting there and that last shot was perfection. But they bring him back. They bring him back. And he is, he does make it to the lighthouse. He goes on his own spiritual journey after his son tells him he has a greater purpose. And he gets Allie and he recruits these people. I love him as an antagonist along with Allie. I think it's a great teamwork. You found him annoying? I can, I, I get that. Yeah, he got fired from Grey's Anatomy for, I think, a tweet, if I'm not mistaken. Put Jaha in C. I see some C's. I see some B's. City of Light was all his fault. It was, 100%. It was his fault. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it was also Allie's fault, but look where she's at. You know? I like Jaha as the villain, but him on his redemption journey was nice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you something that he's not S tier. I wanted him to be S tier. The whole time I was watching the show, I'm like, I love this dude, actually. Like, I, I love Jaha. I loved his redemption story. The bunker thing. I get why he did it. I get it. I understand it. I understand from his point of view, but I didn't. I didn't agree with it personally. So... For Thelonious Jaha, I give him A. I'm gonna give him and Wells right there next to each other. Brother looked good with a bald head too, you know? Yeah, and Jaha kind of, that little speech to Octavia kind of turned her character a bit as well. I just, I just like the character on screen is all. I don't know, even as a bad guy. King Rowan. Wow, we're about to get a little wild with this one, okay? King Rowan. You know where Rowan's going? See what I did there? Rowan going. <laughs> you know where Rowan's going? All the way to the fucking top. I love King Rowan. I love King Rowan. Iconic. Rowan is my fucking dude, okay? I don't know why. I love the way he presents himself. I like characters in shows that they have this look. It's a generic main character look, right? The beard, the long hair, the fucking scuff look. It's a good look. It works in Lord of the Rings. It works in Game of Thrones. God damn it, it works in The 100. It looks good on Buddy. Even though I've seen this man butt-ass naked and shameless, it doesn't matter, all right? It's okay, Jody. I still love you. But this is my guy. I loved everything about him. Just the biggest crush on him? Wait, you or me? I got a little crush on Zach McGann. It's all right. We'll admit it. <laughs> No, but I really like his character. I give him a chef's kiss. Ah, I think he's good. I think he's a cool ass dude, man. I just, we need just uh, Clark. You know, we gotta get these people out of here. You know, yeah. Conclave and the Asgata, my people. And he just, you know, he was down here in the back of the throat. Just, uh, <laughs> I like Ro, man. Amazing character. What's up, Haley? I really, I just liked him a lot. I liked him. He gets an S for me. I respect you all saying C and B and stuff, but me personally, this is my guy. I rock. I think he's a badass. And especially in the Conclave. Oof. Conclave's good shit. Yeah, we just we're just thirsting over him. It's okay. Season was your fave. I respect it. I know she's judging. Wait, what did Emma say? She say something wild. You know she's crazy. What'd she say? I feel like me waiting for you to rank Balarke is gonna leave me disappointed. Maybe. Let's do Jordan, Monty's kid. Uh, uh, I don't have much to say about Monty's kid. He was just kind of there. He had more potential than anything else. I'm not going to give... I, I, listen, I like Jordan. I like Jordan a lot, okay? I have nothing against Jordan. Jordan didn't do nothing wrong. I'm going to give Jordan a B. B for potential. He had potential, right? He had... There was potential there for him. And I just, you know, yeah, it makes sense. I like the kid. He just fucking didn't do nothing. Haley, I got to go get another list. All right. Be right back. And we'll, we'll talk in a second. Well, I'm going to do Jackson and Miller 
at the same time. Not in a three-way, but like I'm going to rank them at the same time. So I'm going to do Jackson and Miller at the same time. And I think one is going to be A and the other is going to be B. Here's why. I love Jackson. I like Miller. I like them both. Jackson. You guys got Jackson in C tier? Jackson is... How do I say this? Jackson, I think, is what Abby wanted to be. Jackson was a level-headed medic. Jackson didn't do any of the weird shit that Abby was out here doing. And I really love Miller, but my man spoke three lines of dialogue every five and a half episodes, if that. Maybe every eight episodes he spoke. And it took them almost, what, four seasons, three seasons for him to even mention his dad again after his dad sacrificed himself to have him in the bunker? Brother, your dad is gone. Talk about it with somebody. So, and also, here's also what I'm doing. Watch this. Jackson's in A tier. Miller's in B tier. You want to know why Miller's in B tier? Because this motherfucker walked through a portal without hesitation. He said, fuck it, I'll go. Didn't even think about Jackson. I'm out. Didn't even think about his baby boy and just left him. Terrible. Terrible. The actor who played Miller was told he could only uh, stay on the show because he played a gay black man or they wouldn't have kept him. Wow. Man, man, fuck these writers, dude. Because this dude, he, Miller, when he acted, could act. That's so shitty. That just made me mad. Underutilized, 100%. Underutilized. Terrible. Anyways. Yeah, fuck Jason. <laughs> they did kill these characters. Um, Ooh. What about Maddie? I I think I just like Jackson on screen so much. Ali, I think I like him on screen just because he was, was kind of unbiased and he kind of just did his job, you know? I like Jackson. I think Jackson was pure. I think Jackson was pure. That's what I'm getting at. I think he was a pure guy. Fuck Jason as our motto? Hell yeah. Maddie. Maddie C tier. I like it. B tier? What's up, Caitlin? Hope you're doing good. B for Maddie. B B for He was Jackson was very caring. Maddie's B for you. Maddie annoyed you a lot. C tier. I'm gonna take a bite of this and I'll tell you all my thoughts and opinion. With Clark and Bell with Bob and Eliza, that they had a miscarriage. And for them to have that scene with her in season seven is super fucked up okay that's super fucked up that's horrible and her to use that phrase like people were saying like, my baby something she's never used before and holding this my baby my whatever it's fucked man it's trash the there's a injury you said you didn't watch the last three episodes there's a scene of of maddie who's basically brain dead right and Clark has to coddle her brain dead child. And Clark called her like my baby and is like holding this thing after she just had a miscarriage. And that's just. That's fucking sick. That's gross. Like, I just feel sick to my stomach saying it. That's sick. Uh, I'm going to put Maddie in B tier. I'll put her in B. I didn't hate her. She did get annoying at times, but she's just a little kid, man. Woohoo, we got a power group right here, don't we? Clark, Bellamy, Raven, Octavia, Murphy, Lincoln, Kane, Monty, and Lexa. Could you guys imagine how quickly that someone would murder me in the streets if I did this? Could you imagine for one second? Nobody, could you imagine? That's not going to happen, but could you imagine? Oh my God. If you thought the little Clark thing I did for a second ago was bad, imagine that shit, bro. Woo. <laughs> so, do we rip the Band-Aid with Lexa? I think 
I think we I think we ripped the band-aid with Lexa. I think we get it out of the way. So Lexa is a global icon and a national treasure for this fandom. I get that. And I love you guys for it. If you're a stone cold, hardcore, a hundred person that's a part of this fandom, I'm rocking with you if you treasure Lexa. I don't hate Lexa. I don't dislike Lexa. I, I personally love Lexa. I enjoyed the character. I loved her and Clark. Uh, and I don't agree that her, I don't like that her character exited as quickly as she did. You know, blame fucking, what was it? Fear the Walking Dead or whatever other show she wanted to do. But like, I, uh, I don't hold her to the, the standard you all hold her to. Somebody did point out that she was killed off around the time that a lot of Hollywood stuff was killing off a lot of their, their LGBTQ characters, right? Which is super shitty. And that just ties back into bad writing and Jason doing things. I just, um, uh, I try to think sometimes about where the story could have gone if Lexa lived. And I don't know if it would have taken off. I don't know where it would have went. I don't, I don't know where it goes. I'm by and Raven and Lexa were it for me on this show. I feel it. That's respectable. And a lot of people, I mean, people cherish Lexa. Like this is their queen and I get it. I did, I did creature. Yeah, this tier list is up for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I don't think, oh man. I don't think I personally enjoyed Lexa enough to put her in the S tier. I did love the fact that she was down bad for Clark, bending the knee to Clark, kind of just she loved she loved Clark, I think in some in some aspect of it, man. I love that softness to her, seeing how she could be with other people very stern and then being soft for Clark. I'm going to give Lex an A. Lex A. Lex A. That's what she gets. Lexa. Look, I even put these right here next to each other because they got the little forehead thing. She does radiate energy. Yeah, I think I think her character is nice, but I just... I like her. I just don't think it was S for me. You ready for this? You ready? This is going to go quick. This is going to go a lot quicker than you think. Monty, S tier. What the fuck you think was going to happen? I'm going to put him right here. I'm going to move this around a little bit. This is in no particular order up here, just so you guys know. I'm going to move this around. So Monty is with Harper, but also close to Jasper and Maya. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Monty's S tier. Like, come on. Our most pure, wholesome boy, right? Pure, wholesome. Sure, he helped with the lever thing in Mount Weather. But like, he wanted the algae farm, man. He had a, he had the fucking solution. He he had the solution. And I know Octavia had the trauma and she didn't want to be in that bunker anymore, but burning that shit, man, that rubbed me the wrong way. At the end of the day, I still love Octavia, but in that moment, I was fed up. Monty had the solution and it, Monty sacrifices himself. He chooses to live his life with Harper and to have a kid and to live that. Chooses to sacrifice his kid in a sense to put him in cryo sleep. So Monty also has to go through losing his kid as well as his all of his friends just to help make sure that they live man precious boy farmer he just wanted to be a farmer that's it s tier insta lock s tier marcus kane i hate it the first five episodes or whatever it was one of my favorite character developments marcus kane ended up being the dad of the group S tier. Look, right here above Jaha, him and his buddy. S tier. He was the dad of the group. He, I don't know, man. I really just, every time I seen Kane, I was like, man, I, I, I want him to do good. He got the stamp. He got the stamp for the con, not for the conclave, but for to join the coalition to, to be a part of that. And he never got to do it. And then he had to get sacrificed. He had to get crucified for not wanting to take that chip. And he only took it when Abby was in harm's way. And I liked him and Abby together. I just know that he loved Abby more than Abby loved him. And sure, Abby chose the pills over him, which you can argue she did it for her craft, for her job, which wasn't is not a good reason to justify it. 
but she does bring him back kind of sort of against his will. Anyways, regardless, I love Marcus Kane. It makes me sad, but he did. It wasn't as emotional as I wanted it to be. I felt like his death would have been something horrible. I hate that I said that he was going to get floated because that ended up happening, right? Fuck me, you know? <laughs> I just thought because they faked out the floating of Abby that they would float Kane. Like, that would be the next move. That, that's just what I thought was going to happen. Oh, Kane and Indra's friendship was beautiful. I wouldn't have mind if Kane and Indra's friendship would have blossomed into something a little more, if we're being honest. I would have been with it. You know what I'm saying? Put Kane next to Indra. I got you. <laughs> I got, I can do that. And look, I'll put him right here above Gaia, a little stepfather action. I'm rocking with you guys. <laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska. Bro, I'm not playing games with y'all from this point forward. Lincoln's S tier for me. I love Lincoln. Fuck them for ruining this character. Our first grounder we see. He's up in the woods like fucking Black Panther. Watching these motherfuckers, bro. And then what's he do? He gets down bad. He's like, the rest of the grounders don't look like Octavia. This is who I want now. So he goes after Octavia. So he's like, she looks like she showers compared to everybody else. So he goes after Octavia. Him and Octavia become a thing. He's drawing pictures of her. He never overstepped his boundaries. He never really even wanted to hurt somebody, but he was defensive. He, he, was, a, he was a protector and he took care of her. He wanted to escape with her and go back to his people. He knew to get to Luna. He took that He took that abuse. He took... I don't know why the writers thought it's a good idea to have Bellamy, who has the same complexion as me, whip Lincoln. I don't know who thought that was a fucking good idea, but Lincoln takes that punishment, and he only decides to speak when Octavia puts herself in danger. It's a super wholesome moment. And Lincoln deserves, like we said a bunch of time, he I know he's not white, but he has the same complexion as me. Yeah, he, I, I know he's not white. But we're, we're both fair-skinned. Yeah, but you get the point, exactly. So... Lincoln is uh deserve better deserves better hey listen you can say this brother's brown all you want Bellamy is light skin okay Bellamy is light skin to the point that that scene wasn't cool <laughs> that boy is almost albino he got vitiligo okay He is light-skinned. We're not taking away the fucking point I made, all right? It's a bad scene. Nah, fuck you guys. I'm just kidding. I love you all. So, okay, anyways, regardless, we're bringing it back. We're reeling it back in. Lincoln deserved better. And for Octavia, I still stand by the fact that Octavia died the day that Lincoln died. And you've seen it in her face. What was going on? And it's just, it's just bad. But Lincoln's S tier. Ooh, next up, baby brother Jonathan. S tier. Where the fuck's Amori at? Put them next to each other. Hey, Allie, you're messing up my stuff. Get over here. There you go. Get above Jaha. Perfect. All right. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Murphy? Who the fuck says C tier? You said C tier? B tier? For Jonathan? Okay, y'all, we're talking about character development. And we're putting people, we're putting single-handedly the best. You stand by? Hey, you stand by. That's cool with me. And we, what? The best character development in the show. What character development? What? I'm gonna ask you a question. Have you ever watched TV before? 
What character development? This man went from the brash, assholish, murderish. Motherfucker walked up and pinched somebody's nose and killed them. Shoots Raven. Doesn't want to be with the group. Everybody turns his back on him. And what does he do? Slowly becomes a hero. Slowly starts to put himself in situations. Sometimes not even for Amori, but for the group. He pissed on somebody. He literally took a piss on somebody. It Raven getting shot was an accident, but it still happened. It still happened. He didn't feel necessarily bad about it until after a while. You know, you can accidentally shoot somebody and have remorse, but for a minute he was like, well, you know, fuck it. What's up, Joey? Uh, we still got a little bit to go. Why does it matter where the inspiration comes from? <laughs> he went from least favorite in season one to favorite. I agree. I, I love Murphy, but it's okay. If you guys if you guys put him in C tier, B tier, I get it. But I, I just think Jonathan's a perfect little boy. He wasn't evil. He was an asshole in season one. I think pinching somebody's nose to kill them. Granted, no matter what they did to you, that's still pretty evil, you know? But Raven, for the most part, was the backbone of the character. That's why she won most underrated numerous times in the recaps. Because she was doing stuff to help. The, she was the backbone of the group. They destroyed her character, 100%. Luckily, Season 7 doesn't exist. So I'm going to go ahead. I told you I'm not playing games, bro. It's also a C tier. Why C tier? I'm giving Raven an S. I enjoyed her character. I enjoyed that she use the chip in a way that knowledge to manipulate those situations and I love the exorcist scene that was 100% a reference to exorcist of them getting that chip out and her turning evil and the way she talked to people was fucking great they destroyed everyone's characters they did they did when I tell you guys that not every character deserves a redemption I mean that Theo from Teen Wolf did not deserve a redemption for me Dioza does not deserve a redemption Finn at no point would have probably deserved a redemption. But if you flesh it out and make the audience witness the redemption, they can earn it. If you flesh out Dioza more with her and her daughter and Octavia, if you flesh out a post-traumatic Finn in those situations, if you flesh out any of these other horrible characters, you can. They did that with Octavia. Octavia had to go inside her own head. She had to kill Blood Reina. She had to fight Blood Reina herself in her head. She had to deal with Pike again in her head. And I think that's why I enjoyed it. Because as soon as... I liked Blood Reina. I liked the concept at first. But as soon as the burning of the farm happened, I'm not gonna... I was not happy. Like, I genuinely was disgusted with the character. But then you also learn... Still not an excuse. The eating of the flesh, right? And that was Abby manipulating the situation to get the protein. You know, we had to kill people and her forcing people to do that in a super dark scene. It's a good scene. But, like, th there's a lot of people to blame in that situation. But then something that actually helps me with the redemption 100% is Indra. And it's a single sentence that Indra says. And Octavia's in her feels. And what does Indra say? We were all... Blood Reina. Four words. We were all Blood Reina. We're all accountable in that core group, being Cain, Indra, Abby, and and Octavia. Not so much Cain. He was kind of forced to do it, but like at the end of the day, they were all Blood Reina in that thing. And I think that adds layers to it. So, with that being said, you are either one crew or you're against one crew choose or I'll cut your goddamn scalp off I'm putting Octavia and S tier sorry I'm glad I'm glad that she made that flip and I think for a little girl that was trapped in the fucking under the floor for 16 years and had to live that life of secrecy and I had to watch her grow as a kid and as an adult with her first little relationship with Adam and Bellamy being super protective and everybody else kind of wanting to control her actions, but her being free with Lincoln and then becoming her own person and then blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I enjoy her arc a lot and eat. What are we eating? The scalp, cut the scalp off and then eat it. No, 
I mean, they would, though. You put Octavia in A tier? I respect it. I respect wherever you guys put her, but her character was a roller coaster. I think it made for good television. I know you can't see her too well behind that big wall of text right there. I can't swear down anymore. You'll see it in a minute. Hey, nobody fall asleep. Next up is Bellamy Blake. So, Bellamy is, uh, Bellamy's up to bat. And you talk about a roller coaster. And you talk about a roller coaster of a very impressionable young man. Very impressionable young man. Who I like. Who I enjoy. Pick wisely? Bet. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't put I wouldn't put Bellamy in trash anyways. That's just a joke. Jokey joke. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Season two, Bellamy. It's perfection. Bellamy's a dick, okay? Season one. He's an asshole. Probably got an STD. He slept with a lot of people. They didn't have condoms. Uh, season two, he's great. Mount Weather, that was my start. I'm like, yeah, this is my fucking guy right here. This is my dude, 100%. I'm rocking with Bellamy. Season three happens. You know, season three is with Pike, right? He teams up with Pike a little bit. Kills 300 innocent people in their sleep. But again, redemption happens. When? When does redemption happen? When they show it. When they show the remorse and they show the regret. You can never take away the actions that a character did. But you can show how they feel about it. Now, that happens. It doesn't... The fact that it happened off screen makes it more forgivable because we really didn't see it. It's just told about. You make that same argument with Dioza. But Bellamy, very impressionable. I like Bellamy in every season but season three. Here's what I don't like. Bellamy had his moment. Uh, okay, I like this. Bellamy at one point was over Octavia. He wanted her to die. Because he knew his, his real sister died. He wanted Blood Raina to die. I'm not mad at him for that. But Bellamy and Octavia never got their full-blown closure as brother and sister. They had their moment there with Josephine Clark laying on the table with, with um, Gabriel. You can kind of see a couple of their conversations was getting back towards it. But we never got their full-blown closure. And I don't like that because those were two of the main characters and I really wanted it. That was Octavia was so chill with his... Oh my God, I can't even I can't even think about it. Yeah, Octavia's closure was with her brother actually fucking dying and she's like, well, about time. He wanted me dead. Haha, <laughs> Uno reverse, bitch. Listen. I No, I blame Jason for that. I agree. I'm with you guys. Here's what I'm going to say. Season 7 doesn't exist. Because of that, I'm not going to talk about Season 7, and I will put Bellamy in S tier. So, what's up, Brew? How's it going? Hey. Now, I'm on the, I think I'm in the minority of this, because a lot of people didn't like the Octavia beating up Bellamy scene. I kind of liked it. I understood her frustration, but I get it from an abuse standpoint. I really do. And I know people said, well, if the roles were reversed, I get it. But I presented what we were presented with, watching him, Bellamy leading to Lincoln's death and everything else. You know, I mean, it was also Pike, but then, yeah, Gina. Just chilling, Mr. Streams? I, guess, I know, I stream at a weird time. I stream, we're doing good. Finishing up this ranking. I Yeah, 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 yeah. I allowed her that outlet as well. I liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, I get her taking out her aggression, and it wasn't something where, like, Bellamy was crying or upset about it. He knew what happened. He knew he fucked up, and he knew his sister needed that. I think that takes a lot of balls for him to take that beating. So, anyways. He seesaw. He did. He seesawed a lot in character development. Season 7 doesn't exist. I don't even want to fucking talk about Season 7, to be honest. I really don't. Can't wait for this last one. Yeah. Hey, save the worst for last. You know what I'm saying? 
No, but last up is Clark, okay? Clark Griffin. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, distinguished guests all the same. The main character of the show is Clark Griffin. We start with Clark. We end with Clark. Your name's in blue and I can't read it. Chrisser? Chrysler? C, what's up, my friend? <laughs> so we start with Clark. We end with Clark. We start with Clark drawing and we end with Clark drawing. Some people said with her drawing, was it all just her locked up making up a story in her head that all that happened? Could have been. I think that'd be fucking stupid, but... Clark is the lever puller. You know, there's a lot of gods in, in the world. You know, there's the god of death, the god of thunder, the god of lightning, the god of the god of bow, the god of dumplings, you know? Clark is the god of lever pulling. And we watched her pull levers. We watched her doom the human race. Shout out Raven for Uno reversing that shit. Uh and we can I tell you can I tell you guys the funniest scene of the whole show? Are you ready? So spirit god Lexa is talking to Clark and she's talking and talking. Clark goes, does this mean you're here to take me with you? And there is, n there's not a second between with you. And Lexa goes, no, <laughs> nah, nah, bud. You don't got a spot with us. That shit's not happening. You are on your own. All right. Don't ever ask to ever come up there with us ever again. She shut that shit down immediately. But. I like Clark. I do. I do think there were moments where Clark was hella annoying. She did say fuck you, basically. That would have been funnier. She's like, are you taking me with you? <laughs> fuck no. Clark does save the group a lot. I think while she was pulling a lot of levers, Raven was also most of the most of the the clutchness in a lot of those situations. I did like the Juan Hada stuff, Commander of Death, but she never felt like the Commander of Death to me personally. She never really gave off that vibe. I never felt like... I knew she had unpredictability to her, but it never felt like how Octavia felt before and after Blood Rain. Like, you knew Octavia would split at a, at a moment. She didn't like when other people made decisions. She really didn't. She would make... She did do the hard choices and took the burn for it, but she didn't like other people making the choices. She wanted to be that person. I did what I had to do. <laughs> AKA nothing. Uh, God damn it, Haley. <laughs> she didn't want that title, though. Uh, she sure as fuck took it, though, didn't she? She's the type of person I'd never be friends with. So before I... I know where I'm putting her already. I want to know where you guys want to put her. I would do a poll, but nah, I don't want to. It's, it's, nah, 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 nah. I mean, I could make a poll. S tier. 16 for S tier, 9 for A, 2 for B, 1 for trash. Nobody voted C tier. Just so you all know, while I did put her in an S tier, Clark is an A plus, S minus for me. I don't think she, I don't know. I don't know. I don't vibe with her as much as you all do. I do like her character a lot. I just like so many other characters. I, I find most of the supporting cast more enjoyable, you know? <laughs> okay, with that out of the way. Are you ready? It's time for the Mount Rushmore. Greatest of all time. I mean, just because she's the main character doesn't mean she deserves the top billing, you know? Main characters can be bad. So, Mr. Goat, if you guys came in, you wasn't here at the beginning of this. Mr. Goat stands for Mount Rushmore, greatest of all time. Only four people can go from S tier to Mr. Goat. Only four people can go from S tier to Mr. Goat. Only four. This is my. This is my Mount Rushmore. <laughs> these, these are my decisions. <laughs> Just remember that. Your top five. Clark, Octavia, Raven, Monty, Murphy. I like it. I like it. First person. 
was Monty. Easy money. Wholesome boy. Did nothing wrong. Wanted the farm. Wanted to be a farmer. Wanted to hang out. Without Monty, they never make it to Sanctum. They die. They float out in space forever and cry sleep. You know? You respect it? I appreciate it. Ready for the next one? Because Mount Rushmore. So like Mount Rushmore, greatest of all time. So Mount Rushmore is only four faces on Mount Rushmore. With the founding, with the presidents and shit. So anybody says like, what's your Mount Rushmore of gaming? It's your, it's your top four. Yeah, yeah. Ali says Murphy's goat tier next. You're 100% right. Why the fuck wouldn't Murphy be goat? Listen, I know you guys don't, a lot of y'all don't like it, but this is the best character development in the show. Murphy had the comedic timing. He had the lightheartedness. He had the comedic value. He had the seriousness when needed. And he would do anything and everything for Amori, even pretending to be a prime. This feels like The Bachelor. <laughs> Ready for the next one? Let's let's keep going with character development, shall we? My other favorite character development. Probably one of my favorite characters of the whole show. I'm not going to look at chat. Not because of the pick. I'm just not going to look for a second. It's Marcus Kane. I was going to move somebody else up, but somebody said it, and I didn't want to keep going in order like that. They didn't want to think they were calling the shots in my stream. You know what I'm saying? So, Marcus Kane, love him or hate him, I love the character. Now, this isn't an all-male thing up top. We're not doing that. Fret not, my friends. I just love those three characters. There's another character about to put on this bitch that I love. More, I love him more than Kane, but I think that they should be together. You know, I think that they should meet again. And I think it's time that she gets her proper fucking respect as, I'm going to steal some wrestling terms here, as the tribal chief, as the head of the fucking table, as the one above all, the stone cold badass that would do anything for her loved ones, her daughter, for Maddie, for whoever it is, and it's Indra. I just, come on, it's Indra. I got to put Indra up there. I love Indra to pieces. Indra is just, I'm going to move this around just a smidge. Well, actually, I kind of like that. Octavia, Bell, Clark right here. I am going to move Lincoln to be next to Octavia. And I'm going to have Amori just under. This is no particular order, by the way. I'm just moving shit, so it's in, it's in order there. And I'm going to put Shade Hata under that. Kane and Rowan had a little bit of a thing. Monty probably fucking hated Allie. I don't remember. But then Harper's down here too, you know, so it's still in line. And then Jasper and, and Maya. Anyways, that's the Mount Rushmore greatest of all time for the 100. It's Monty, Jonathan. Let's start. Let's put some respect on names here. Monty Green, Jonathan Murphy, Marcus Kane, and whatever the fuck Indra's last name is, if she had one. Indra... Tree crew, Indra come tree crew, right? Right? There we go. That's my Mount Rushmore greatest of all time. Read it and weep. Here's the full list. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to turn chat box off for a moment. So you guys can see the full list right there. Have at it. 
eat your heart out. Yeah, Indra come tree crew. Hell yeah, baby. Them's the peeps. Them's are the homies. You can pick a fifth. Who would I be? Don't start that. Cause you don't say, can you pick a sixth? Um, if I had to pick a fifth. Either Ali or Octavia. How about that? And I still stand by the fact that season seven didn't exist. Okay. But I, I think it's hard because I, I, Raven was such cl like so clutch during those moments. Amori. Ah. Rowan wouldn't go any higher. J.R. Bourne wouldn't go any higher. Octavia. Bellamy Clark. Allie. Raven. All have potential to be up in that top spot as well. So. I came in late. What was your reasoning for putting Wells in B tier? Because he's Wells. He's just a wholesome little boy. He didn't do nothing wrong. He just hung out. That's all. Welcome in, by the way. Me with the hot takes. What'd you say? Huh? Oh. Oh. Oh, is anybody else posting anything in Discord? Ooh, we got a couple. All right, let's look at peeps. Let's look at this. Let's look at slow turtles. Mount Rushmore up top. All right, we got Murphy, Octavia, Clark, and Indra. I love that list. That's smooth right there. Who we got in trash? Very respectable trash list. I like it. Very solid S tier list. Josephine and S tier, I like it. I like it. All right, Sass, what we got? Raven, Indra, Octavia, and Lexa. The four horsewomen of the apocalypse up there. Hell yeah, I like it. Trash tier. Very solid trash tier. Good shit right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mount Rushmore. For little... You added a whole other extra tier. For little, little baby mama Faith. We got Murphy. Why the fuck is Wells in your goat? He was in three episodes. Three episodes. I, whatever. Hey, hey, it's your list. And Amori. Okay. You didn't even put Amori and Jonathan next to each other. Wow. Ah, uh, okay. It's, it's in order. Okay. Okay. S still should have put, still should have put Andrew in there. All right. Anyways. Uh, who? Yeah. Good who tier, by the way. Shit tier. Yeah. Fuck Charlotte. Me and all my homies hate Charlotte. Little asshole. Good list, peeps. Solid list. I like it. And spoiler alert, I would like your all's list no matter what you put, to be honest. I respect your all's opinions. All right, I'm going to download that. Download image. I blame Jason for everything. Fucking same. 